Hello YouTube, Ben here. Uh, let's talk today about oxygen. I had a very interesting experience occur with the 60 gallon. Some of you uh, who watch my videos uh, saw a video a while, ago, a while ago, maybe about a year and a half ago, about a little bit of an oxygen disaster I had. But I noticed something very subtle in the 60 gallon and I took some steps to correct it and the results have been very, very um, interesting, interesting for me to watch. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you what happened. I noticed, um, I, I was looking at the tank, and I noticed that some of the fish were um, acting a bit lethargic, like that Malawi hawk. And I also noticed that the fish were working their, um, you know, working their mouths a lot. And uh, it wasn't like they were at the surface gasping, like, uh, in an, like you'd see in a tank that was completely oxygen-starved. But uh, still, they were working their mouths in a way that indicated that they were they were laboring a little bit in their breathing. And I think what this did is it brought about some stress. Um, I ended up uh, having to uh, put one of my uh, juvie eye biters back in a hospital tank, where I'm treating with some uh, with some general cure right now. And I think what it did is just sort of stress the fish out. So I thought about putting a bubbler in and a couple other things because it, it was obvious to me that I was having an oxygen problem. Why? Um, I mean, I was getting a lot of surface uh, tension breakup with the with the sun suns that you can see here. They're producing some good some good uh, surface tension uh, breakup. But this room, the room that this tank is in, uh, gets gets pretty warm, and so the tank was was up around um, 80, maybe 81, 82. Uh, for long periods of time and so I'm not sure of the exact science behind it but um, when temperatures are higher in a tank like when you treat a tank let's say you're treating a tank for ick and you and you um, you kick up the temperature to to kill off uh, the ick or to stop the ick cycle from uh, from occurring then um, you need to add an extra some extra oxygen Apparently, when there's hotter water, it's uh, the oxygen uh, becomes a bit more scarce. Now, <clears throat> if you know the science behind that, certainly post it below. It would be very interesting for the folks that read the comments. But um, I was about to add a bubbler when I re when I remembered that I had this Marineland. Um, I believe it's a it's a uh, Marineland 400 uh, filter that somebody had given me. It's this dual bio wheel that had come with the 135 tank when I bought it. So rather than, than putting a bubbler in, and as you folks know, um, I just don't, don't happen to like the, the look of bubbles. Um, you know, if you like them, that's fine. Some people love them. I'm not that crazy about how they look, so I tend to not oxygenate my tank with a bubbler. But, the, um, but by creating a lot of uh, surface agitation and water movement, you can oxygenate a tank and so I got this Marineland, this bio wheel filter, and I, I installed it. Yeah, I'll show it to you. This old filter, this old filter was part of the package deal uh, that came with that, uh, with that 135. And when I got it, I had, to, I had to cut away this back lip on the back of the, of the tank here. I had to cut that away so it fit in. I was actually a little bit uh, afraid at some point that I wouldn't have the width to accommodate it because it is a huge, a huge filter. And uh, you can see here, it has two, uh, two bio wheels that I guess are supposed to be growing bacteria. What I've installed in, in this filter is um, right behind the wheel here is some pinky floss. And uh, by the way, if you install pinky floss in your filter, be sure you tuck it in nice and low because it'll inhibit the turning of the wheel. Then there's the, um, the sort of factory filter that comes with it. it. has a little bit of charcoal in it. And then behind that I have these uh, special bio balls. They're um, CNZ, CNZ50. And what they are is they are, they're plastic balls but they have inside of each ball a sponge. So you're getting a lot of, um, a lot of surface area for um, beneficial bacteria to thrive on. So I'm uh, 
But really that wasn't the, the total intention of this filter. The intention was to create surface agitation. You can see I'm getting a lot of that with this, with this bio wheel, with this filter uh, pumping out all the, all the water. I think it's 400 gallons an hour that this, uh, that this filter actually uh, pumps out. So when, when I installed this, I had to move the tank away from the wall, so I had to reduce the water level so we could move the tank down to a couple inches. So it gave me a massive water change. So uh, uh, let me show you uh, what I noticed immediately with the fish. You see some little green flecks inside the intake of the filter. I've been feeding the fish these uh, veggie these veggie sticks from Ken's Ken's veggie sticks. Um, I like them. They're a little messy, and um, not only do you get the residue from the veggie sticks, but you also get a uh, luminescent green poop that uh, comes out of the fish, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But what I noticed uh, immediately after um, adding the extra water motion and uh, surface agitation was the activity level of all the fish. All the fish started to become more active. I also noticed that they stopped working their mouths. They stopped doing that heavy gasp. You might see a, a little bit of mouth motion now because they think I'm going to feed them. But they, they, you notice how they're swimming around here and their mouths are shut. Now, <clears throat> if you notice that your fish are gasping or they're working their mouths, that is, um, that is a, a sign of a little bit of distress. They can be worked up. They can certainly be worked up, maybe just having finished a chase or about to eat or maybe just ate and have a lot of food, you know, in their, in their mouths the way they tend to do and, and hold it there. But um, if you're noticing it constantly, it is a sign that you should pay attention to. It might mean that you're low in oxygen. So I noticed immediately activity. I noticed their mouths stopped working um, as much as it was working before. And I also noticed um, some additional vibrance, some vibrancy in the colors of some of the fish. This one here got, the Taiwan Reef got that little yellow in its belly came back that he had before. He had kind of become a little bit uh, washed up. I got a little more yellow, a little brighter yellow. And um, certainly the, uh, the red empresses who are usually always looking pretty good, but they look even, I feel even even better now, now that they have um, enough O2. Another thing that surprised me was that the Malawi hawk started swimming around a lot. Usually he was just kind of hanging out in the back but I noticed immediately he started hanging around a lot, and I noticed a lot of blue flecks on the side of his body and on the gills uh, showed up almost immediately. So color, the color, uh, some color started to come in. Now he's still very young to be coloring up. He's probably I don't know maybe four inches, a young guy, very young, very young Malawi hawk but I did notice that he became much more active. He was never swimming like this before. He would usually just kind of hang out near the back. I thought maybe that was just his temperament. But the truth is, is that he was actually low on oxygen. I don't know if you can tell with this camera, the little bits of blue that showed up on his sides after that, uh, after adding the additional O2. So the point of this video is if you see some gasping, if you see the mouths working a little bit harder than they should, realize that you may actually be a little bit oxygen, oxygen uh, depleted and this is affecting both behavior, coloration, and overall activity in the tank. And those are certainly areas that I noticed an immediate change when I added that uh, that filter to the uh, to the 60. 
So now I'm running that filter and two SunSun Sun 302s, so there's a lot of water turnover. The Sun Suns, once you stuff them with media, they're probably realistically at about uh, 200, and the, the Marine Land, I think, is rated at four, so I've got about 600 gallons. So I'm, I'm getting close to that 10, that 10 times total tank volume for turnover, and uh, obviously when you get into that sweet spot, it looks like it really makes a difference. Okay, so that's it for now. That's the tip I had. Definitely watch watch your fish, watch the indicators on your fish. And if you see if you see any kind of indication that there may be a low level of oxygen, definitely take action. Don't wait. Uh, I waited a little bit too long, and it might end up costing me an eye biter. And uh, we all hate to lose fish, right? Okay. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for tuning in. And certainly if you have any thoughts about oxygenating your tank, uh, tips that you might have, please share them below. Um, I, I love to read them, and I'm sure other folks will read them as well. So any uh, advice or tips you have on how to uh, bring about optimum o uh, oxygen levels in an aquarium, uh, go ahead and post them below. And uh, it's certainly an important issue that sometimes gets neglected. Uh, especially um, among us cichlid keepers, African cichlid keepers, who tend to overstock, and uh, and uh, so you have to have you have to watch every every parameter, every uh, measurement has to be watched closely uh, because things can go bad very very quickly. So um, thanks for tuning in.